Hey everyone and welcome back to another graphics card fault diagnosis and repair video. Today I'll be working on this Asus GTX 1080 Ti Poseidon Platinum. According to its owner this thing's been physically damaged during cleaning um, and apparently there's some missing components on the back of the board and this card as you can tell has also already been worked on. Um, I hope that whoever it is that worked on this thing uh, didn't you know rip any pads or something like that but um, I guess without further ado let's find out what exactly is wrong with this one. So the back plate should now just come right off. Yep. Okay. Um, it looks like they knocked some PCIe decoupling caps off of the board. Though I do have to say, um, they did a good job of cleaning this thing because the PCB is actually very clean. But yeah, uh, let's take it apart the rest of the way. Okay, it should come apart now. And it sure does. Let's get the seat sink out of here. Okay, during disassembly, we already found out that there is an issue with the PCIe decoupling caps. That is probably what they meant when they contacted me, when the owner contacted me, I should say, and said that they damaged it during cleaning. But I'm gonna go ahead and see if anything else is wrong with this thing. I'm gonna go into continuity mode and just quickly check all the power inputs, just to be sure. PCIe slot 12 volts is fine. 3.3 volts is fine, and both 8 pins are fine as well. Um, let's check the voltage rails that the card itself creates, so that would be V-Core right there. Yep, V-Mem. Yep, looks fine. Uh, I reckon this right here is PEX. Could be. Could also be 1.8 volts. Uh, I, I guess this is PEX right here because it says 80 ohms. It's not short either. Yeah, I don't know which uh, voltage rail is um, what exactly, but frankly I don't care because as long as there's no short, should be fine. But yeah, I guess the only issue with this thing uh, are the PCIe decoupling caps right there, which that in of itself actually doesn't mean that the card is broken. Um, but if you have a couple missing caps down here, um, the card won't be detected properly. 1080 Ti's are 16 X devices, and with um, missing capacitors down here, um, you know, especially towards the right here, this thing would only be detected as an 8 X device. Are these two capacitors touching? I reckon they are. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, we are now in the microscope view, and as you can see, these capacitors are very clearly touching. But the pads actually look fine. So, I guess whoever it is that worked on this previously, while they weren't able to fix it, they at least didn't damage it, so good job. Okay, um, I'm just gonna fix the two capacitors that are touching. And then for the missing three ones, I will have to pull them off of a donor board. So yeah, let's uh, fix these two up really quickly. All right, so I've got my donor board right here. This at one point was a GTX 1080. And as you can see, we've got plenty of these PCIe decoupling caps here. So I'm going to steal three of these and put them onto the 1080 Ti.
Okay, now that I have the three replacement capacitors, let me clean up this side a bit. Put some fresh solder onto the pads. Okay. And let's put these capacitors on there. number one. Okay, and that is number three. They're not perfect solder joints, but I reckon they'll be fine. That that is looking good. Okay, I guess with the capacitors back in place, let's give this thing a, a quick test. Okay, with the graphics card now installed in my test bench, let's see if it works. Memory appears to be working just fine. Okay, we're now in Windows. Drivers have already loaded, as you can see. The resolution is correct. Let's see if it's detected as a 16x device. And it is, as you can see, right there. I'm gonna start the render test. Clock speeds look fine. Power consumption also looks fine. Sometimes the INA3221 or the capacitors around it, if uh, there's something wrong with them or with the chip itself, uh, you will see incorrect power readouts. But this looks perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm just quickly gonna run, I don't know, something like superposition on it. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it run here for a couple minutes. And uh, if it doesn't crash, it's fixed. Okay, it hasn't crashed, which means this thing's basically ready to go back to its original owner. And I guess with that said, if you enjoyed this rather quick repair video, leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope to see you guys again in the very next video. Have a good one.